Hello, this is part two of the previous uh, lecture. So if you're arriving now here, you're not allowed to be here because you have to watch the other class. Otherwise, this will be nonsense. Okay, so in the other class, we define the way for each M in this set, 3K, to create a tree associated with this, uh, uh, this set. And to create this tree, we derive the procedure to create this tree uh, uh, step by step. And in this procedure, there was an updating rule and a deletion rule. The updating rule is applied to all previous uh, leaves, and in each of these leaves, you apply, if beta is positive, then you apply an updating uh, rule, which replaces the leaf by a, a slightly larger structure, which is a tiny tree, and um, and then you delete some of these leaves if the beta, uh, if something happens, and we defined this in the previous class. Okay. Okay. So the lemma now, which uh, I call lemma 19 in my notes, I think. is the following. This procedure halts. Okay? That is at some point in the construction of TM, all leaves M prime beta prime have beta prime negative. Okay, that is the, the claim. And I will prove this claim only in the very final part of this of this lecture. Um, now, so I explained idea one, which was to work through example k equals 2 and derive some concepts that can be generalized to all k's. Idea two, we generalize these concepts to uh, uh, general k. So now for each m, we can associate a tree. And now idea three is how to, from the tree associated to m, derive a certain inequality that will look like a recurrence inequality with, uh, with starting from some y and going uh, from to y minus something. Okay, that was the main idea. So it will be a proper recurrence uh, inequality. And that's uh, what Ligarius and Krasikov call critical assignment. which I will just write as CA. Okay. So what is a critical assignment? So definition. Uh, so you take an M in 3K and it's associated tree. And so and it's uh, tree T. Okay, the tree, the tree will depend on M anyway. Uh, so a critical assignment is a subtree, so it is a tree, t, t prime, that is contained in this new tree, in the tree you, you form uh, starting with M, with the following properties, so the following properties. First property, it has the same root. Uh, a second property, um, it satisfies the following, if 
M prime beta prime is a node is a node in T prime, then all its children are nodes of T prime. If you heard the noise, you can guess my computer. And the second is um, if a mean node is in T prime, then exactly one of its children. is on T prime. Okay? So that's what is called a critical assignment. So let me see what is that looks like in the example. So let me do the example k equals 2, which the only relevant three was this one. So we have 8, 0, and then we had 5 minus 2, and then here was a main node. And then here we have a 2 alpha minus 1. And then here 5 alpha minus 1. And then here 8 alpha minus 1, but that was removed. And then here we have an 8 alpha minus 3. Uh, and then here a main node. And this guy is just a 1. And this is a 3. Uh, and this mu node had three options. The first one was 2, 2 alpha minus 3, and then 5, 2 alpha minus 3, and then 8, 2 alpha minus 3. This guy was erased. This guy was just a 2, 2 alpha minus 5. And this guy had a uh, 8, 2 alpha minus 5. And he had another mu node. And then have three options, which was... 2, 3 alpha minus 5, 5, 3 alpha minus 5, and 8, 3 alpha minus 5. Okay, so that was the tree associated with 8, 0 in the case k equals 2. So what's the critical assignment? A critical assignment should be a subtree that tells you one of the terms in the inequality you can derive for 8, 0. Okay, so the convention, again, to remember the convention is that M beta always stands for all the node in the tree, but also the function itself, KMY plus beta, for a particular Y, that, that's what it stands for. So I could say, so I could derive inequalities for these things, okay? So... This tree, we already saw that, implies inequality, which is like uh, 8, 0 is greater or equal than the min of a certain quantity of terms, and one of these terms is 5 minus 2 plus 8 alpha minus 3 plus 8, 2 alpha minus 5 plus 2, 3 alpha minus 5. Okay, so we know this because of the systematic way we derive the tree, the connection with the with the procedure of iterating the inequalities we had before. But this, uh, um, so, but how can we do that in a systematic way that we can generalize? And the concept is here. And so let me circle in black a critical assignment. So it has to be a subtree, okay, with the same root. So I start here. And if it's a root, if it's a node, then I take all the children, which is this guy and this guy. So I have to take this. And if it's a mean node, I only take one. So for instance, let's take this guy. And if it's a node, so I take two, so I have to take this, and I have to take this other mean node. Now it's a node, so I need only to take one guy. Let me see, let me take this, this path here. And now this is the guy, okay, this, uh, this guy is an, 
standard node, so I have to take both children. This is a min, so I only take one. Okay. So in particular, you can derive from these conditions that the leaves, uh, so that the leaf set of T prime is contained in the leaf set of T container equal. Okay, so this is a so this thing here is a critical is a critical assignment. So like it's a is a CA. There are other ones. I could take this one, or I could take this one. So there are three. Or instead of going through this path, I could take this path. So four. Or instead of going this way, I could go to this way. So I have five. So I have five cri possible critical assignments. So that. Uh, so well, we have five possible critical assignments. Okay. And what is a critical assignment? If I take the leaves of this critical assignment, which will be these guys here, this, 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 and this, these would be the leaves, I do know that one possibility of iterating the inequality started with this guy would be to take a min of certain terms, and one of these terms would be this plus this plus this plus this. Okay, so what we conclude here, and this works in general, you can see from the example, I'll not state this, uh, so I'll state this as a lemma without the proof because it's basically you can work out the proof, so you can, if you want to really be rigorous, you can work out as a problem, as an exercise problem. So the lemma, which I think I call lemma in my notes, I call it lemma 20 is that for all m in 3k with associated tree t we have that let me go back to the notation 5k m y greater or equal than the mean of a sum. So let me maybe push this a little bit to the right. So phi k m of y is greater or equal than the mean of a bunch of terms. But each term is just, you take a vertex, which is an m prime beta prime that belongs to the leaf set of a certain tau okay and then you're going to put here phi k of m prime of y plus beta prime and tau is a critical assignment of the tree tm so let me put sub index phi m here and m there Okay, so that's the lemma. So the lemma is that the equation, the, the, the inequalities we derived for this, and I, uh, is exactly so if you iterate the system of inequalities that we have for these functions, is the same. You, you're going to in the final end, you're going to derive a certain inequality, which will be a minimum of bunch of terms, and each of these terms will be a summation that summation here, over all the leaves of possible, of a, a possible critical assignment. Okay, so let me put this as a bar here, let's see. So you have the summation here, which will take all the leaves, will be this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, in this example, and then on another possible uh, uh, critical assignment would be to go in this direction, so you would have this guy, this guy, this guy, plus this guy, and then this guy, this guy, plus this guy, plus this guy. And then another one would be this guy plus uh, this, uh, sorry, this guy plus uh, 
this plus this. In another critical assignment will be this guy plus uh, this guy along. So you have so you have uh, five possible critical assignments. And in this example will be five different sums you put in the min, which is exactly the idea of taking the subtrees, which we call critical assignments, and then taking the minimum after over a certain summation of the leaves. Okay. And since we stop exactly when all these betas in the leaves of T uh, are negative, all these beta primes here will be negative. Okay. So now you have a proper recurrence, recurrence uh, system of inequalities. Okay, you have this weird min, but anyway, everything on the right hand side has y plus something, and this something is negative. Okay, so, so if you want, I'm taking information on the previous time and bounding uh, the information on the follow, following time by the information of the previous time. Okay, so that is. Uh, lemma 20 and you can work out the rigorous proof as a problem if you want the proof as a problem okay so now we have all we basically have all things we just need one final idea to start the proof of the main result. And this, follow, this uh, 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 final idea is just really just a small insight. Okay, so let me just recall what we did. What we did was for every m in the set 3k, we created a tree. And this tree had a particular proce process to create. And we still have to prove that this process finishes. We'll prove in the end. But, which is this level 19 here. But anyway, the tree is finite. From this tree, we can infer something. We can extract information. What is that information? Precisely this. Phi k of m is greater or equal than a mean of certain sums. And each of these sums is uh, a summation over the leaves of a certain critical assignment. And a critical assignment is just a subtree from the tree associated with M, uh, that, uh, which has a certain properties, as described here. Okay. So now we can already think of iterating this inequality over and over, and hopefully, hopefully you can get an exponential growth. The problem is that maybe... You can't. Maybe this system of inequalities, even with the, all these betas negative, maybe they don't have a solution. Maybe, uh, um, not they don't have a solution, but maybe you can't extract exponential growth from the system. Okay? Maybe you can't. Probably you can, and we will see it. So, probably you can, and you will see that... Uh, um, uh, you can actually can extract some exponential uh, growth. The question really is just how uh, how fast uh, this exponential uh, uh, growth is going. So the real question is how, uh, the um, how large is the exponential growth, and that's the the role of this parameter lambda. Okay, so. Before we go into the proof of the main result, uh, I will remember what the main result is anyway in a moment. We just need one more idea, which is idea four. I need to rewrite in this part. So, what is idea four? So, first, I need to remember you what's the system, the linear program that is associated with the main result we want to prove. So what's the linear program associated with the main result we want to prove? So that's the linear program. So the system, 
So recall that L, K, N, T on the lambda for a particular parameter lambda, so for 1 less or equal than lambda less or equal than 2, we have a certain system we can call it, which is the following, C, K, M less or equal than C, K, 4, M lambda minus 2, plus C, K, 4, M minus 2 over 3, lambda alpha minus 2, and here is C, K, M, CK for M lambda minus 2, and here CKM, CK for M lambda minus 2 plus CK minus 1, 2M minus 1 over 3 lambda alpha minus 1. So this was M congruent to 2 mod 9, this is M congruent to 5 mod 9, and this is M congruent to 8 mod 9. So I'm dropping the mod 9 notation here anyway, just to simplify things as I did in the previous class, and we had one more system, CK minus 1 of M was less or equal than the mean CKM, CKM plus 3K minus 1, and CKM plus twice 3K minus 1. Okay, and we also had the condition which was 1 greater or equal than CKM for all M. Okay. They all have to be positive, so we just ask that them to be greater than equal to one. So this could be just positive or, or greater than equal to something, because this system, if you realize, once you fix lambda, this system is scaling invariant. If you have a solution, then you just multiply the vector of the solution by some theta, and you have another solution if theta is greater than equal to one. Um, so, so recall that the system is that, okay? But then what happens is, well, so let's look to this tree here, okay? So let me look to the example k equals 2. Let me write the example k equals 2 for this system, we may call it, which is the following. C2, 2 is less or equal to C2, 8, lambda minus 2, plus C1, 2, lambda, alpha minus 2, and then C2, 5 is less or equal to uh, C22 two two lambda minus 2 and C28 is so less than equal to C25 lambda minus 2 plus C2, C12 lambda alpha minus 1, and then you have C12 is less than equal to the mean between C22, C25, and C28. Again, these are indeed linear programs because this mean condition here is just me being lazy and not writing three different inequalities that this guy has to satisfy. It's just shortening this to write as mean mean. Okay. So this is the inequality for k equals 2. So for instance, let's start with C28. And let's compare with this three. Okay. So suppose I have this tree here. Well, C28 is less or equal than C25 lambda minus 2. We do have a 5 lambda minus 2 here. And we also have the C12. And the C12 comes from this min. Okay? But in this situation, different as before, this mean means that it, this guy is less or equal than each of these terms. So I could replace the second term by three things. In each one of these three things I allowed, so I could, so let me write what I'm doing here. So I'm doing C25. So let me follow this critical assignment here, for instance. Lambda minus 2, and then C12 lambda alpha minus 1. But then C12 is less or equal than each one of these three guys, which is represented by these nodes as well. Then uh, it could be that I choose to go to this direction. Okay, so I replace C12 by C. C22, lambda alpha minus 1, which is me going this way. And then C22 is replaced by these two things. So I just go and write C25, lambda minus 2, which is uh, this thing and the min. So let me write this guy here, which is C28 lambda alpha minus 3, because I'm just replacing uh, um, 
c22 by this, so I have to multiply by lambda minus 2, you get a minus 3 here, and then lambda 2 alpha minus 3. But then c12, I have to choose, because it's, it's less or equal to a mean term, that is represented by this again. So I could choose each one of these, let me choose that one. So I do have then c22 lambda 2 alpha minus 3. So this tree is matching exactly the process of iterating these inequalities. So I could do one more. So we have c25 lambda minus 2 plus c28 lambda alpha minus 3 plus, and in c22, again I can replace by this, which will give me c28 lambda 2 alpha minus 5 plus, and then I have a min, which is exactly represented by this, and I can choose each one of these trees, these this three terms, and then I choose this guy here, which would be c22 lambda 3 alpha minus 5. So I arrive at the final inequality, which is c28 less or equal than these four terms. So the key insight is that the same tree we did before, it's applied to this part. That's the key insight that Lagarius and Karzikov had in my point of view. So that is the final idea, it's a idea four. The same tree works for L, K, and T lambda. The same tree, because basically we could be re replacing greater equal by lesser equal and use the same tree. And again, the, this critical assignments idea work exactly as the same for these terms here. The only difference is that in this case, uh, each one of these assignments here correspond to a possible mean that phi k could uh, be evaluated to. So, and these, these leaves will correspond to these summations here. In this case here, every single way, every single assignment is indeed true. It's not a possibility, it's just true because everything is just less or equal. There isn't why here, okay? Because this mean here just represents the fact that C12 is less than each single one of these quantities. Okay, so, so we could use the same idea of critical assignments to derive another lemma, which I will write here as lemma 21, is the following. For all M and 3K, we could use just the same tree to iterate these inequalities uh, with tree TM we have so for every critical assignment this summation is a possible upper bound for CKM therefore if you take all possible upper bounds you could take the min so CKM is less or equal than the min of the same things in the leaf set of tau, and tau is a possible critical assignment, but now here is just C K M prime and lambda to beta prime, where uh, tau is a critical assignment of T M. You take a moment to digest the information, but you will see that, yes, he has some point here. The same inequalities, these inequalities here, you can use the same tree concept, the same tree structure to iterate these inequalities and derive other inequalities. Now, the, the only difference is that in this case, it will work for every possible scenario you take, so every, for every possible leaf set of a critical assignment you have a certain inequality, so you do have a min here. Okay, so that's idea 4.
So the same tree structure works for this. And that's, that's how they were thinking, because if we could derive something like this, I can, if, if something like this works, then I have the same idea. Okay. So now with these two lemmas, we can prove our main result. So we leave these two lemmas here, and we leave this tree here as well, and then we'll try to prove our main result here. And then we have, we have it almost there. Of course, that we remember what the main result is. Before I prove it. So that was idea four. And I, I, I have to confess that you know, when I was reading Laguerre's and Krasikov paper, I was a bit confused because there are a lot of words, a lot of definitions, but the core idea is really nice. The core idea is just uh, 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 creating a, a tree to organize your thoughts, really, on how to apply the system of inequalities in a nice and concise way. Uh, a nice way that can give you only what they call retarded variables, which is sums like this, y plus beta with a negative beta. Okay, so that's all there is to it. But again, it becomes quite technical. So, uh, proof of Theorem 18, my note, which is just a statement that phi k m of y is greater than or equal to some constant c k of m lambda to the power y. So the statement is that, oh, I erase the system, but whenever that LP system can be solved, which was the original one here, then uh, this works for all i is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we call that system that we raise here is the original L k lambda system, and if that is solved, then we have this. So this works if we can solve the system L k lambda. So that's the, the theorem that we can do it. You have to prove that's the statement. Okay. And the proof here goes uh, by induction. So, so, so it will be induction on the interval where nu. So we define some quantities. So nu would be the max among n's in 3k over the max uh, of the following, which is uh, minus beta. Uh, let's say minus beta prime, where m beta is a node in the leaf set of tau, and tau is a critical assignment of T M. Okay, so for each M, I'm doing something. So for each M, I will maximize over all the M's. I'm doing something, and this something is another max over all the betas that appear, so it's prime and prime, all the beta that are prior in the lift of a critical assignment. So what I'm really doing is I'm going back to this lemma here, and I'm taking this uh, uh, the beta here which is closest to zero. Okay. So, oh, sorry. So the 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 beta which is far away to zero. Okay, which is the the, the uh, farthest to zero. So that would be the new. And the mu will be the, exactly the same thing with the min over, but the minimum. And the min over minus beta prime, such so that m beta prime, beta prime is the dot. The same, the same thing as above. 
Same thing is above. The same thing is above. Okay? So now mu is uh, the beta, is minus the beta, which is closest to the origin. Okay? So what, do, what we do know here is that nu is greater or equal, nu is a max, so it's greater or equal than a mean. And this means it's strictly larger than zero because all these quantities here are negative. Uh, so each tree is finite. So this quantity is here is negative, and you have a finite number of m. So this quantity here is negative. Okay, so you have a, so uh, um, so this guy is strictly positive. So this quantity is strictly positive. Okay. Okay. So we will apply induction on this set. So we show that this inequality here, so, so we will show inductively phi uh, kmy is greater or equal than delta ckm lambda to the y for all y in zero uh, nu plus j nu for all j integers. That's, that's, that's the idea. Implicitly, I mean that there is some delta such that they can apply this, such that this holds. So that's the, the idea. Okay. Well, let's start with the base case. which is in the interval j, 0, nu. Okay? Well, nu is positive, and each of these functions, phi k of m, is greater or equal than 1 if y is greater or equal than 0. So, if y is greater or equal than 0, then phi k m of y is greater or equal than 1. So, we can take... Uh, delta, which is equal to the, you take the max over all these numbers and take minus one. Okay. If I take this delta, then definitely, definitely, I'm going to this inequality is going to hold in the interval y belonging in zero. Okay, so let me go from j to j plus 1. That means I want to go from the interval 0 nu plus j nu to the interval 0 nu plus j plus 1 nu. Okay. But, well, the inequality is already proven by induction in the case in the interval 0, nu plus j nu. So, I don't need to prove in this whole interval, I just need to prove so it is enough to prove. Um, let me call this inequality here a star. Star for um, nu plus uh, j nu less uh, than y, less or equal than nu plus j plus 1 nu. Okay? Obvious. But then what happens is the following. So we have, a, we have a, a system of inequality. So let me leave these two lemmas here. Let me erase this, uh, this tree now. So what's the first inequality we'll have is the following. So, so we have phi k m y. Okay, so by the lemma 20, this is greater or equal than the mean of certain quantities, which will be these guys, m prime, greater prime, in tau, sorry, in the leaves, 
in the leaves of tau, so in the leaf set of tau, and this will be mu of k m prime y plus beta prime. And tau runs over all critical assignments. Tau is a critical assignment of Tm, of the tree associated with m. Okay. Okay, but this beta prime is what? Well, this beta prime, so mu is minus the max of this beta prime. So minus mu is the maximum of these beta primes. So I know that beta prime is less or equal than minus mu, because minus mu is the maximum of the beta prime. So, um, so y plus beta prime is less or equal than um, uh, is less or equal than y plus minus mu. But y is less or equal than nu plus j plus 1 uh, plus j plus 1 times mu, so this is less or equal than nu plus j mu. Okay? And in this interval, y plus beta, we know by induction something. So by induction, we have. So by induction. We have that phi k m of y is greater than or equal to the min of a bunch of things, uh, which is just c uh, k m prime uh, delta, which is by induction here, and the lambda to y plus beta prime, because this this whole guy here is a new y, which is of the previous set where we assume that inequality already hold. Okay. Okay, so I will omit the the thing here and the thing here because we know what it is. So I can rewrite this so this lambda to the y and this delta can come out. So lambda to the y and this delta, let me write it. And then we have a min of some ckm prime lambda to beta prime. But that's exactly this sum here. And from lemma 21, this is greater or equal than delta lambda y c k m. Okay? So this shows the new inequality in this new interval here, which then shows in this new interval 0 to nu plus j plus 1 times u, and finishes the induction process, which implies that uh, this inequality holds for every y. Okay? So this finishes the proof. So the induction is really easy once you define the right things, but uh, the key part is this two lemmas, okay. which are almost trivial if you understand exactly the way we derive and construct these three is Tm. Okay. Um, so all we remains to show is that the procedure to create each tree TM, and that's the thing that I, I told you that I was going to prove only at the very end of the class. So the only thing that remains to show is that the procedure to create a TM is actually halts. I mean, these trees are finite, so I, I left that particular thing to prove in the end. Let me prove this now. It is not really difficult. So the claim is the following. Let me prove proof of the lemma. I think they call lemma 19. Is the insight that if you start with a certain tree, let's say M naught. 
and then you have some things in here, and then you arrive at a certain m prime, beta prime, okay? And then you have some things in here, and then you have another m2 primes, beta 2 primes, okay? And then this can go on. And then uh, the assumption is that m prime equals m2 primes, and therefore by the deletion rule we know that beta 2 primes is less than beta primes. Okay. So that's the assumption. Okay. Suppose you have something like this in the construction, in the procedure uh, of constructing a TM. So that's the three TM. Okay. And suppose even more. Suppose that then you then arrive at a certain m prime 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 beta three primes, and this can go on. And um, and you know that m prime 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 are equal, so you know that this guy has to be less. Okay. Suppose that this happens okay, in the procedure. You have to find three guys. So the claim is is that, I suppose that these are consecutive ones, for instance. Uh, and you don't need to assume that, but suppose they are consecutive. So the claim is that uh, beta prime prime minus beta prime is equal to beta prime 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 minus beta two primes. That means that, uh, so these are, uh, um, so yeah, so I have to assume that they are consecutive. Okay, so, so in the subtree with root here, the first time that I find this guy, this m prime again is here, and again, the subtree here, the first time I find this guy is this here. This m prime prime is here, okay? So the claim is that this holds. And why is that the case? And the best way to realize this is, one, well, the mathematical way is that the process of updating and deleting only depends on the path of the node to the root. So updating only depends on the node itself, fine, and deleting depends on the path of the node to the root. And whenever you have something like this, and this is a branching process, because you always uh, taking a leaf and removing by a, a, a structure which has a, two branches here and then one which has three. So you have a, a, a branching that has at most four branches after you delete. Whenever you have something like this, um, um, yes, whenever you have something like this, you will have a certain property. Uh, you will be able to say something about um, uh, the tree. And that's the something, okay. Okay. So the best way to see to see this in my point of view is the following. Imagine that I don't do the deleting rule. So imagine, let me write that. So imagine that first I just apply the updating rule. And I, and I arrive at a certain t, which I call t tilde m. This tree will be possibly infinite, okay? I don't care if it's infinite, infinite or not. So we arrive at a certain, so just apply the updating rule, you don't delete anything, you just go and go, um, and you, you only stop, you, you don't update the leaf. Again, the updating rule only updates the leaf if beta uh, is positive, as greater or equal than zero. If, if beta is negative, we never update. Uh, maybe I didn't write this explicitly, but you could figure out for, from the way I was explaining. So, uh, when, for every leaf, uh, leaf you, you only update that if the beta associated is greater or equal than zero. So, <clears throat> so you just do the updating, so possibly you get an infinite tree. And then, from top down, from the root to the leaves, 
you apply the deletion rule level by level on this new tree. Okay. You can realize, easily realize, then apply, so this was the update rule, then apply the deletion rule from top to bottom. level by level, so for each level of the, of the street. The result will be the TM that we define. It's the exact same process, okay? Because these processes are independent. So I could just apply one until the uh, two I can't apply any, anymore, so you're possibly getting something infinite, and then I'm just Start deleting the things, okay? Okay, the possibly would get still a V3 here, TN, but it will be the same as before, but I want to prove that it's not infinite. Okay, okay. so in this T tilde M, so suppose that now this drawing here is the T tilde. So if I have, if I have found these three guys here, then on T tilde, I would still find these three guys here. So let me go to T tilde. So now this tree is possibly infinite, okay? But since I'm applying only the updating rule, it's easy to see that, well, if, 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 if I start with this guy, and I get again another, the same M as here, the same M prime, this tree here, should, this tree with the root here, this guy, should be exactly this one just translated. If I just take this guy and translate back here, I should get the exact same thing because the updating rule is just updating each node and it depends only on the node itself, okay? So, in T tilde, if I find this guy, it means that this tree, if I translate this part here, this, this part here, and I translate it to here, I should find the same thing, and if I translate it to here, I should find the same thing, okay? So, the difference between this and this guy, and by the way the updating rule is made, and then the way I update, you can easily realize that the difference between these two guys has to be the same as the difference between these two guys, because the value you would get here, if I started here with a zero, I would get a certain delta here. And if I started with a beta prime, I would get here a certain beta prime plus this delta. That's the nature of the updating rule. So in here, since it's the very uh, second instance of the same M, I should get beta plus 2 delta. I should get beta prime plus 2 delta. So the claim is proven, just because of this realization. Because in detail, that you should find this. So after you're deleting everything, the same property will still hold, because these guys were not deleted, and therefore, they should satisfy this. So that implies that so we conclude, so that's the claim. So we conclude that for every path, what we conclude, so if you take a path going from the root down, okay, this path has to be finite. To take any path, they start from the moon, it goes down. Okay? Suppose you can go down, 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 and you don't stop. Okay? Then this path, or either this path is finite, it's just going down, or it's not. And if it's infinite, then uh, it can be infinite, because if it is infinite, it means that a certain number n will be repeated over and over and over and over. A certain number n prime will be repeated. For every time you find a new n prime with a different beta, we know that it must be the case that this new beta is just the previous one minus something, because I know that this is decreasing. And this minus is fixed. The second time again I find this guy, I'll 
be reducing minus this delta again. So, so it seems to start with a fixed number. At a certain point, I will have to give, reach something negative. And therefore, uh, from this point one, uh, the deletion route would eliminate that node, but this node is not eliminated. So we get, an, we get a contradiction. So we conclude that every path from the root down is finite. So if you find the path that is going down, it has to stop. Otherwise, we contradict the fact that whenever I find two or three guys, consecutive guys, uh, there will be a delta that will be reduced from this to the guy, and another delta reduced from this to the guy. So you know how much you're going to get, uh, so how much, uh, 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 how far you can get. Okay. So why this thing implies that the tree is finite? Well, there can be a tree that has a retarded long path going from root to all finite, going from root to a leaf, but this path you can find always find a retarded long path in this tree. So the tree could be still infinite. That's not the case because this is a branching procedure. Because uh, basically, so there is a lemma you can quote to prove that whenever you have a tree created by a branching procedure like this, that every path from root to a leaf is finite, then the tree is finite. There is a lemma you can quote, or you can just picture how you can do that. And one way to do that is the following. So, okay, so now we have a tree, and any path going from root to leaf is finite, but still it can have every tiny long paths, and the tree could be infinite. That's not the case. Imagine the following. So our tree is something like this, and then it has two things, and then uh, maybe three things here. So let me do the following. Let me slice here. Let me put here uh, as one. Let me slice here. Let me put here half. So zero will be at some point here. And then slice here, and put one quarter, and then slice here, and then you put one eighth, and then you have a bunch of slices until you reach zero. Okay? And I will draw my tree. So this is a figure in the plane. This is now in the plane, and I will paste my tree in the plane in the following way. Suppose you have a certain branching process that for each step you just build a, a bounded, uniformly bounded number of branches. So you have something like here, and you have a certain number of branches, okay? Which is our case, which is at most four. So we just simplify the picture and just write it like this. It's at most four. And then the next, you write four branches as well. Okay, but now the length is a half. And then you do the same. And what you have to do also, you have to shorten these angles, of course. You can always do that. And then you keep going. So the claim that there is infinitely many paths is equal now to the claim that... So for each step, you're building this compact set. And the claim that there is infinitely many long paths going from the roots to the bottom is that this process reaches zero. So this compact set has a sequence of points converging to zero, okay? So that's the claim. And I'm showing that this cannot be true because, well, suppose it is true. So you have a sequence of points converging to zero. So you could take the paths from these points up. So suppose you're here reaching zero, you're here reaching zero, and you're taking one path you take one point really close and take a path back to the, to the root. And you have another point maybe here, closer, and you take the path back to the root. And you have another point here, maybe closer, and you take the path back to the root. Okay? And you keep doing like this. So these paths, for each slice I do here, a half, okay? So it's in the building of the, the constructor of the set. Okay, but this is a compact, or well, this is the closure of this set is compact, which means that if you take these paths and consider as sets in the plane, being in a bounded region, 
and the Hauser topology for compact sets is complete and any uh, sequence of compact sets in the boundary region has converged has have a subsequence that converges to a certain compact set so these paths here have to accumulate in one path okay so so, so these paths here that you're taking for points closer and closer have to accumulate in one path okay so suppose you're now taking a subsequence of these paths and these paths are accumulating in a certain particular path if you only look in this part there are only finitely many options here to choose finitely many lines so this path is accumulating has to choose infinitely often one of these lines so suppose it chooses this guy infinitely often and then you look for the second slice well there is uh, only finitely many choices here so it has to choose one so suppose it chooses this infinitely often so you take that subsequence of the converging uh, subsequence of paths and you do over and over so this is a kind of a dia counter diagonal argument so now you're constructing step by step the path that goes to that converges to zero okay so you conclude that if there are infinitely many paths in this branching procedure that are arbitrary large size implies that there is a single one with infinite size which means that translating to this picture on the plane that there is a path a single path that converges to zero it's kind of um, uh, intuitive to think this way there must be a path but th this is uh, like more or less explaining the way you can do it so okay so whenever you have a kind of branching process that we have here we, and uh, uh, if the, 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 the three is infinite infinite then there is an infinite path okay uh, but if there is an infinite path, you contradict this observation we did here because every path should be finite so impossible, so the tree has to be finite Okay. and uh, the name of this lemma, maybe I can track here very quickly so this is a way of proving a certain lemma that actually applies uh, to several instance says um, maybe I won't find your this one that you find the initial move of halts Yeah, this is called so. This is uh, uh, so. This is called Koenig's lemma. That um, that whenever you have an infinite tree, then you must have an infinite path. Okay, so this is a way of producing. Uh, uh, um, Infinite tree, uh, this is a way of proving this uh, uh, by play, pasting everything on the plane. And the only, uh, I think the only condition uh, you really need is a bound on the number of branches uh, each, uh, the tree has in each point. If it has a finite number of branches, then, then uh, an infinite tree must have an infinite path. Maybe it doesn't even, you don't need, even need this, but. Uh, um, this is called convex lemma. In our case, you can prove by just pasting it on the plane. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the class and see you next time.